Have you ever wanted to one-shot an acolyte? How about deal over 3 million damage in a single tick of a slash proc? Today, we're going to talk about heavy attacks, the most damage you'll ever need. I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. We're going to cover a few aspects of heavy melee attacks. I'll go over the two main types of heavy attack, what goes into the heavy attack damage, what builds you'll need, and the weapons which really work best for all of this. If you do have any further questions about this or anything else really, come on over to twitch.tv slash thickengineer for live gameplay and practical problem solving. Regarding the heavy attacks themselves, there are two ways to approach them. Either you go for a pure heavy attack build, utilising initial combo bonuses, or you go for a heavy combo build, making use of combo efficiency. Pure heavy attack builds are the simplest to work with, your chosen weapon will have heavy attack stats built on into it. The heavy attack damage stat is, as you might expect, the total weapon damage to be inflicted on hit with a heavy attack. The slam attack is how much you deal to enemies directly with a heavy slam attack, while the slam radial damage is the area of effect damage from the shockwave. Slam radius is how far the shockwave goes, and lastly wind up is the delay between starting a heavy attack and actually making the swing. Heavy slam attacks almost universally are a waste of time, owing to the fact that the slam radial damage is fixed. You can't crit boost it, nor can you increase it with combo. The Archetitron can boost this damage to deal a considerable amount more, which will work on the star chart, but we can do much better than merely beating the star chart. Now a few other weapon stats also affect your heavy attack. While wind up affects the delay before the swing, attack speed controls how fast you actually execute the attack. And of course, your critical chance and critical multiplier govern how hard your critical hits land. The follow through stat determines how hard you hit subsequent enemies when you hit more than one in a single swing. Your range impacts how far your heavy attack actually reaches, barring for certain weapons like gun blades, and then your status chance has the usual implications for how you impart status effects. Now a big part of actually landing these heavy attacks is with your wind up time so your first mod should be Killing Blow. This gives 120% pure damage to heavy attacks and 60% wind up speed. You'll also want Amalgam Organ Shatter for another 60% wind up speed and 85% critical damage. This already makes your wind up more than twice as fast. Next we'll need to mod for Critical Chance. This is best done with a pair of Sacrificial Steel and Sacrificial Pressure. While Sacrificial Pressure has lower stats than Primed Pressure Point, or a decently stacked condition overload, we're already getting pure damage from killing blow. The more important part is the critical chance from Sacrificial Steel, which is doubled on a heavy attack. Without Sacrificial Pressure, the most we get from Sacrificial Steel is a 440% critical chance, the same as the upcoming max for Blood Rush. But with the full Sacrificial set, this rises to a 550% critical chance, which is a pretty big difference. Also on the subject of crits, we'll add in Gladiator Might for a further 60% critical damage of course. And next you'll also want to have some initial combo. Heavy attacks are multiplied by your combo multiplier at the time of swinging, which starts at 1 times. Corrupt Charge increases this to 2 times innately, instantly doubling your damage. It also raises the critical chance a further 10% thanks to Gladiator Might, but that's not really a big deal. As I mentioned earlier, attack speed is also important in pulling off the heavy attack and allowing you to get going on the next one quicker. To this end, you can use Berserker for that 75%, soon to be 70%, faster attack animation. Heavy attacks are strong enough that you should have this mod almost always active. This leaves you then with one final flex slot. Usually, Primed Reach is a good one here for that extended range. However, other options present themselves as well, depending on what you're using. If you need a source of healing, Life Strike can go here instead to give you health on those heavy attacks. If you prefer some utility, Dispatch Overdrive will give you bonus to movement speed on heavy attack hit. Or pop on a smite mod and go hard on the faction you're facing. As a final option for this flex slot, you can put a mod like Prime Fever Strike which will do wonders against most corpus units. If you want to get a ribbon for this type of build, you'll want to grab yourself some initial combo, pure damage, critical damage or critical chance usually. If you can get attack speed, either from the Riven or an ability buff, you can as well drop the Berserker mod 
to go for an additional flex mod instead. Now, out of the two types of heavy attack, this is the weaker of them. To rescue this, many weapon groups have four slash procs as part of their heavy attacks. That's claws, dual daggers, nikanas, rapiers, scythes, tomfers, two-handed nikanas, warfans, and whips all have guaranteed slash procs for their entire heavy attack. For single daggers and machetes, they have four slash procs on just part of their heavy attacks. This four slash proc is important for a few reasons. First, the four status proc skips status chance. This means you can use a low status build, even with a negative status riven, and still get the full slash proc each time. The next reason is that slash is extra effective against armor. Despite armored units continuing to scale into insane effective hit points, by bypassing that, that allows you to kill much more readily against high level armored units, like on the steel path. And thirdly, Slash ignores elemental and physical mods. While you can put Prime Fever Strike onto your heavy attack build if you want, the mod will have no effect on your Slash at all, so instead you can focus onto other parts of your build, such as going for more range. So these Slash supporting weapon groups are ideal for being able to handle every level of enemy. With the stacked benefits of critical hits, raw damage buffs, initial combo buffs, and heavy attack buffs, you become able to carve through most enemies with a single swing, letting the bleed do its job. For weapons without a 4 slash proc, you'll find a pure heavy attack setup will fall off against the strongest units, demanding something a little bit more. This brings us on to our heavy combo builds. As the combo bit of the name suggests, this approach requires you to build your combo up to the maximum. This enables the use of combo mods like Blood Rush and the Gladiator set to give you incredible critical stats. This higher combo also means a higher multiplier to your heavy attack, a 12 times multiplier to damage at maximum, except for Venka Prime. The only problem is that a heavy attack usually consumes this entire combo. To fix that then, you need to use combo efficiency mods. Reflex Coil and Focus Energy can be combined to give you up to 90% efficiency, which is the cap for all weapons. This efficiency means on a heavy attack swing, you'll only lose 10% of your combo count, rather than all of it. As a result, you spend less time building combo, and more time using it. In terms of the build then, you'll want to trade out Corrupt Charge for Blood Rush, as we no longer need the initial combo. Reflex Coil and Focus Energy would take up the Flex slot and remove Berserker. Getting rid of Berserker does mean you will find some value in sourcing attack speed elsewhere, such as from Arcane Strike or Warframe abilities. As part of this, use Naramon to keep your combo meter up allowing you to maintain a very high combo count with ease. When you combine all these buffs together, including Sacrificial Steel, Blood Rush, and the Gladiator set all at once, you can get an exceedingly high critical chance. For this, I strongly recommend bringing along Gladiator mods on your Warframe, and even using the Helios Companion with Gladiator mods on its Deconstructor weapon, to further ramp up the critical chance to the maximum your weapon can achieve. Between the Gladiator set, the new Blood Rush and Sacrificial Steel, you can achieve a total of 1,650% critical chance bonus for your heavy attacks. But given just how high this buff has become, it's usually not worth it to include a critical chance modifier on a Riven at this level. Instead, heavy attack efficiency would let you replace one of those two mods, and the other positives can be bonuses to faction damage, elemental damage, or of course critical damage. For those weapons with a high Riven disposition, you can get the maximum combo efficiency just on the Riven itself, which will open up a second mod slot. That spare slot can be used for a variety of different options, such as for additional range, but if you're on a weapon without a 4 slash proc, you'll want to use it for Weeping Wounds, building up the status chance so you can get status effects the standard way. Effectively then, we have two different ways of doing a heavy attack. Pure heavy stacking initial combo, and heavy combo using the combo efficiency setup. These builds can be used on either a standard heavy weapon, or a weapon that has 4 slash procs on its heavy attacks. In terms of raw damage output, the top 10 weapons are the Strofer, Redeemer Prime, Kuva Shield Egg, when you have a full 60% damage bonus, Fraggle Prime, Karudo, Grand Prime, Heliocore, Gwandal Prime, Parasesis, and Vitrica. To be clear, Strofer has roughly double the average heavy attack damage of Vitrica here as well as a greater ability to apply damage and gain combo in the first place. So weapons outside of this top 10 are far below the maximum. 
other weapons will still do fine, just not as fine. Now most of these have pretty solid range stats, the two gun blades especially, but Karudo has a very low 1.25 meter range. Its saving grace comes from the very high follow through stat of 0.9, allowing it to do much more damage when striking multiple enemies compared to the average weapon. If you can group up enemies tightly enough, such as when using the ensnare ability, Karudo can be a particularly efficient heavy attack weapon if you don't want to be using the gun blades all the time. Now while these weapons take the top spot on just big numbers, when it comes to armour targets you'll find a reliable source of slash is far more useful. The top 5 weapons in this type are Reaper Prime, Hate, Pennant, Venka Prime and Estreza Prime, each with their own notable pros and cons. Reaper Prime and Hate are the top spot for damage, but they have the lowest follow through of these 5 weapons, making them a bit less effective in groups. That is, assuming the groups you're facing are even coming close to surviving your damage in the first place, which they probably won't. Hate is that bit slower than Reaper Prime, but not by much, but that's what allows Reaper Prime to stand on top. Pennant then is one of those few weapons with a good special feature relating to heavy attacks. A heavy attack kill with Pennant will give it bonus attack speed for a short duration, and that duration is based on how high your combo was when you got the kill. It only procs on a direct kill though, not if you kill them with a slash status, which means it's more suited to the heavy combo build for the higher duration and higher direct hit damage. Venka Prime has the highest follow through of these 5 weapons, and the unique ability to reach 13 times combo for a higher maximum hit than its stats may initially indicate. The downside though is that it has a much lower range. And as for Destreza Prime, whilst it has the lowest damage out of these top 5, it does have the shortest wind up time of only half a second at base. With all 5 of these weapons, the slash proc you are able to inflict with a pure heavy attack build is usually enough to kill most Grenier on normal steel path levels, and by extension most units in general. With a heavy combo build, that slash proc gets into the ludicrous numbers I showed at the start, especially if supported by abilities like raw or bonuses like viral. There remains though one final category of weapons which are the cherry on top for heavy attack gameplay. Zors. Many Zors have better stats than their non-Zor counterparts. On top of that, every single Zor can be equipped with Exodia Arcanes, some of which pair very well with pure heavy and heavy combo builds. Exodia Brave will give you energy regeneration on a heavy attack kill, up to a maximum of 15 energy per second for 4 seconds with 3 such kills. Exodia Hunt will pull enemies towards you when you do a slam attack, setting them up nicely for a group hit with a heavy attack afterwards. Or you can use Exodia Triumph to simply gain more combo from hits, and Exodia Contagion to have an alternative melee attack. Just one final detail then, to really drive home how powerful this can all be. In the opening clip I showed a slash tick of over 3 million damage to a corrupted heavy gunner. As that damage is not affected by armour or level, we can still do that damage to the maximum possible level a level 9999 Corrupted Heavy Gunner on the Steel Path. A Corrupted Heavy Gunner of that level would have a little under 2 million health. This means with the right setup, in this case just a raw buff Dokram Scythe, you can do enough damage to kill a max level Heavy Gunner in 1 second with 1 swing. Wait, sorry, this is before the nerf to Blood Rush. Let's see, after that nerf, a county for the loss in critical chance, it would only hit for about 2.7 million damage. So instead of a one shot kill, this would be a one shot kill. You know what, I think melee is going to be just fine. And that's that, everything you need to know about heavy melee attacks. If you have found this video helpful, do give it a like, and subscribe to the channel to catch more as I upload it. That's all from me for now, so as always, get combo, swing heavy, and fight well Tenno.